in some of the other videos we've already done about residential HVAC, mm -hmm. but how is that different in a commercial setting? Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Dick Construction Show. I'm Jeff Givens. I've got Booker, Jonathan Booker here with me from- Good to be here, Griffin Mechanical. Yeah, and service in the Dixon, Tennessee, and area, Middle Surrounding Tennessee area. area. Yeah, HVAC expert. Yeah, we're experts. And plumbing. Perfect. Plumbing, commercial, HVAC, we do it all. Perfect. Uh, Jeff Spencer. Um, hey guys. You guys know Jeff, our construction expert here in house. And then uh, Jerry work as usual, producer Jerry behind the camera. So we're trying to pick Jonathan's brain while he's here with us. And my only real experience personally with HVAC has been residential. I've walked by plenty of commercial units, I'm sure, but I've never actually worked on one. So we've, we've talked in some of the other videos we've already done about residential HVAC, mm -hmm. but how is that different? in a commercial setting? Uh, commercial, everything's bigger, higher voltage, and bigger duct. So higher voltage, so our homes are on 120 volt or 240 volt mm -hmm. units, right? Um, when we're talking commercial, what are, what are we talking about? 450? Yeah, 460, 460, three phase, 208, 230. 230, does it ever go bigger than that? or? Nothing that Pretty we much do. Four eighties about, about, about as big as we see. Okay, and that's that's a three phase, mm -hmm. three phase wire in yes, that case. Sir. Okay, and uh, when it comes to you know, you mentioned some rule of thumbs for residential. You said roughly six hundred square foot is one ton, mm -hmm. a one ton unit. Is it a similar kind of calculation for commercials? There's, there's a different calculation they take into configuration the people the heat load the cooling load the windows uh, so, so you're looking at a whole like lot of calcul calculation count as well yes there's a whole lot of calculations that go into a to a size in a commercial building hmm now is it now we talked about in residential you know it makes sense to have like a split unit mm -hmm. do you see split units in yes, commercial you as well? see, uh, Split systems, package systems, VRFs, ductless splits, uh, sky's the limit. <laughs> so there's of course, a, you know, the boilers, chillers, and things like that okay. in commercial that are... And so when you say a boiler and a chiller, I mean, the name kind of sounds intuitive, but what, what do you mean by that? Uh, most of that's in a hospital setting, things like that. Uh, I don't really dig as deep into the commercial side as I do residential. Um, we don't service as many of those. A lot of universities still use those. Things. Yeah, university, yeah, college, <coughs> Vanderbilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of it like an HVAC, you, you have yes. a boiler. Mm -hmm. And you have a chiller, so you have, and that would be your your boiler heats the water up. Heats the water. They use it to heat the the facility. Then it goes through your chill lines. It goes back through a condenser, and just like on your the, HVAC system, the, the same the water, water will run through the condenser and it mm -hmm. chills down. It can also be used to cool as well, but it chills down and gets reheated or you mm -hmm. know however however it goes. But does that kind of look like a radiator? Yes, mm -hmm. but they're big. They're chill towers. Yeah, what they are big towers on the mm -hmm. roof and. Uh, of course, you can control each room separately off of those. And um, how, how do you do that? Because it's all one supply, right? How do you control mm -hmm. separate rooms? Control duct lines, dampers. So if, it, if it's calling, it might open a valve, go into this room to where that room, you might have a somebody that wants it warmer, cooler in each room. And So do you have two separate supplies in that case? You've got a heating supply and a cooler. Kind of like your hot water. Mm -hmm in your house and you like when you turn the valve or digitally or analog yeah you're saying you, you put like so much heat in and so much cool into this room and it mixes is that how that works in some situations okay. actually, it'll do that but yep. it just depends on the on the application okay correct me if i'm wrong but i mean you're talking about the valves and stuff and like the temperatures i know like on a 
and, and the reason, I mean, I, I really don't know anything about it except for uh, my father when he had his business and his partner, they, they also were like pipe fitters and they also done uh, uh, boiler work, you know, they were in the union, they done boiler and pipe fitting work through the union. So we worked on a lot of like Fisk University, you know, mm -hmm. Vanderbilt, places like that that had, you know, boilers. And some of the old stuff, best I remember, he's talking about the valves and stuff, how they control, you know, how much heat goes here, how much goes where. I think they weren't in, controlled individually like by rooms and the older stuff, it's controlled like by a wing. Like this one wing, mm -hmm. like it mm -hmm. may be 20 rooms, this one wing, but whatever you set the temperature at, that's what that's everybody, what everybody got. got. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but I think now remember. they can they can narrow it down can to, it really? the, to the okay. area. It's uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I, I don't go on to many of those jobs, but I hear some of the commercial guys talking about it. And uh, technology so is really kind of like a commercial. Yeah, team. there's a commercial team, residential team, okay. and plumbing team. Now, do you see? Like with your jobs, is it usually just HVAC or just plumbing or does it, when somebody hires you guys, like it makes a lot of sense just to have you guys do both? Uh, we have some guys that can do all three. You know, you might have somebody that started out in plumbing, decided, hey, I'm going to give heating and air a shot and they get into residential, then move up into controls and commercial and so there's, there's a few guys that we have can do all of it and, and by uh, controls you're talking about these valves mm -hmm. any kind of control wiring dampers fire dampers and all that kind of stuff we'll have a usually with our commercial guys they'll have a construction rough in crew come in they basically hang the ducts set the ducts set the units and we have another gentleman uh, comes in and makes all the joint connections pressurizes the lines and uh, then goes back in and wires everything. So you, you said a fire dampener. What is that? Uh, you get a fire in the ductwork, it shuts everything down so it won't spread through the building. So because fire needs oxygen, mm -hmm. you're saying you shut down the oxygen. So I have a create smoke. a vacuum. Mm -hmm. They have a smoke detector in the unit, so if it detects huh. it, it okay. shuts everything down for safety purposes <laughs> okay not let it spread through the rooms well I know and with with your company Jeff Spencer you guys have a sprinkler division mm -hmm. right right now I wonder like is there any overlap there between the sprinkler system in a commercial building and the HVAC team or is it kind of two separate things it's two separate things I mean <clears throat> if their fire gets away the sprinklers you know should once sprinkler heads are designed they've got a little plastic deal in there that holds the valve in place and it's there's there are different thicknesses I guess you could call it I don't know, know exactly how it is I don't really work on the sprinkler side I know just enough to be dangerous that's how I am <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you get a fire in here and you got a sprinkler head like we have one right up there there's a little thing that separates from the the shield there that up to the holds the valve in place if you get a fire and it reaches a certain temperature like some 150 degrees 200 degrees or mm -hmm. set at different settings it will melt and activate that valve. It will release it and water will come yeah. out. I mean, it sounds like electrical, it sounds like fuse, similar mm -hmm. thing. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Yeah. It's the make or break style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people get confused, but you know, my boss told me one time, the sprinkler system is not designed to put out a fire, it's designed to contain the fire until the fire department can get here to put it out. Mm -hmm. That's oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I always imagined what it would be like to be in a building when the sprinkler system went off. Well, it don't, and that's another thing. I, I, I used to think the same thing, but if you have a fire in this room, these may be the only heads that activate because okay. you got to get a certain temperature ah. for them. So mm. they're not, may not, you know, you may. You'd have to be really close off. to the origin. Yes. Uh -huh. Or it needs to already spread. I, I right. guess I always thought when this one went off, everyone in the building. I kind of thought, thought the same thing. But I guess but, it makes sense if, if, if what activates it yeah. is the heat mm -hmm. deterioration of that piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not smoke that triggers it, it's no. heat that it's triggers heat. it. Because mm -hmm. I know there's the old, like, in movies or yeah. videos like so take a cigarette and blow at it, you know. Yeah. But now if they was to hold their cigarette right against that, you know, they get yeah, probably yeah. get hot. It would probably melt it and it would it would activate. Yeah. But you, you at that point Damn you Damn Hollywood take, always tricking us. You, you, yeah. always, <laughs> you can take and actually knock it out, you know, if you hit it hard enough. Oh okay. And activate it, yeah. Yeah. 
and with our the the dampers, you know, it's it's laying horizontal and duct and the same thing. As a mechanism here with lead, if it gets hot enough, it just collapses shut and huh. closes. So, and I'm not for sure. I know that we have what they call concealed heads, and they actually have a plate that goes over them. And they look like they're flush mount with the ceiling. Okay. Mm. I'm not for sure. I think it still has to get up a temperature, but something, I don't know what knocks that plate off, but the plate gets knocked off. But I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that works. But, you know, a lot of times you go in, you see like discussions or flat plates against the ceiling. You wonder that's what they right, are. So it's on a sprinkler head. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I know you're not, you said you don't work with the commercial a whole lot, but, but at what point in the build phase, do you guys get involved? Are you guys putting out quotes before before even the dirt work's being done? Yes. Yes. You start putting in quotes before the dug before anything dirt work gets started. Usually they'll send a set of plans. We have to go through and call. There's several different companies they use. The plans mm -hmm. will say you're gonna use train equipment certain registers, grills, certain ductwork, inner line. So there's a, is it mostly aesthetic when it comes to the returns and grills? or is uh, it some, some scenarios, different buildings they are. Some people want exposed ducts. Some people know it's going to be below a drop or above a drop ceiling and uh, hmm. different different style grills and registers. I mean that, you might have one that cost $122 and one that cost seven. So yeah. different brands, you right. know, you have to really these commercial estimators, I've been working with them for two years at Griffin and uh, you know, I get a little house plan, I'm done in two hours. I basically know what we got and with those guys. It might be two, two weeks. or three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to send in to to the guys over at you they know whatever kind of train and they have to go through, send some middles back. Mm -hmm. We put all our info in, send a quote, and it might be another month before they hear back and you know you got three or four companies yeah. bidding that job so they're really for that kind of the car commercial side of the business you're looking at a project life cycle of on the scale of years mm -hmm. yeah year and a half yeah. two years yeah is, for a big facility yeah, and yeah plus you know a lot of times if you are a good customer or a good client you know with the gc there may be multiple bidding phases like you know it may mm -hmm. you may get like 40 percent drawings and you're bidding and doing some value engineering yes and then it comes back at 60 percent drawings mm -hmm. and then you're bidding again and do some value engineering then usually when you hit 80 percent or better drawings pretty, you can give hard numbers at that point tight. Mm -hmm. yeah and also correct me if i'm wrong but on commercial side nowadays there's about a 50 60 percent chance that the building you're working on is going to have BIM coordination as well. That's I've heard. I've heard that. Yeah, and because uh, you know our guys have to do it as well. But and that seems to be a good way to do things if everybody does their job and keeps up with the BIM. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, see your conflicts before you actually you know start putting your stuff in the ceiling or in the floor. Right. Or, you know, yeah, before it's too so expensive can, to fix, yes, right? You can right. you can make a little mistake that could cost a whole lot yeah. of money. And especially you know, like you know, y'all's duct work and stuff. I'm sure it comes prefabbed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot like of our sprinkler pipe, you know, we off that BIM coordination, we send that pipe to our fab shop. It gets fab, you know, based off that BIM coordination. Mm -hmm. Then you get out there, you know, and there's a gas line in the way or yeah. something else. <laughs> there's always know. something in it's the like, way. Yeah. And then, so you got to refab your stuff on site, you know, to, to make it work. Mm -hmm. yes, At that time, usually whoever's there first, you know, wins. <laughs> yeah, get yeah you get your straight shot, and then you've got to yeah. go around plumbing, <laughs> electrical, yeah. structural, and yeah. why did they make a U here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they didn't have a choice. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Well, um, interesting topic. I, I have a couple more questions, but I think we'll hold off for right. now. Um, yeah, um, it's it's really interesting learning about things that I'm really not an expert on. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, you. no problem. We'd love to have you out in a few days. We can get you on a job. Site. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm not as useless as I look, <laughs> but I am quite occupied already. So. I so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in, guys. This is Jonathan Booker with Griffin, Griffin Mechanical. Mechanical. Uh, serving the Middle Tennessee area for HVAC and plumbing needs, residential and commercial. Yes, sir. Oh, man. And I've known you for 
30 years? No, has it been 30 years? Probably so. Probably. Golly, I went to Dixon well, Elementary fourth grade. So. Yeah, 30 years. It's, yeah, long time. Man, Flies you're, by. You're getting <laughs> old, man. I know it. <laughs> slow it down. All right. Well, hey, thanks again for tuning in. If you got to look for a job bidding and costing solution for your business, check us out at ProfitDig.com. That's what makes all this possible. Uh, if you like the content, give us a like on the video, share it with your friends, subscribe. Um, we really appreciate you checking us out. Have a good one. See you guys.